I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freud, and this is The Next Page. Hey, Marissa. Hey. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm terrific. It's winter. It's snowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not skiing yet. <laughs> but that's not that doesn't mean I won't. It just means I'm not skiing yet. Well, I still need to learn how to ski, so I guess I'm not skiing yet either. <laughs> You're a little busy. <laughs> yes. We said How's that next year, next year when Isla takes ski lessons that I will also take ski lessons. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. Well, that's great. Yeah. You know, I, I tell you, you will love it. It, it. You know, the nice part about, about skiing is it gets you outside mm -hmm. in the winter. Yep. Now, did you skate? Um, I did a little bit. I mean, like I took lessons when I was younger. Yeah, I thought... You, yeah, I thought but just for fun, just for fun, not not competitively or anything. Oh, okay. And Isla cool. has actually been asking to do that because um, on one of the television shows she was recently watching, she saw that and she said, I want to do that. Awesome. So we'll get her into that as well. And that works right into one of the laws we're going to talk about today. Yes, The it law does. of curiosity. Mm -hmm. But we can't start there. Nope. So we got to start with the law of trade-offs, and I really can't believe that this is our fourth session in our four series, four session series on growth. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I hope it's been beneficial for folks. I hope that they've taken advantage of downloading the notes that we've put in for the last couple of weeks, and we'll have mm -hmm. one for today as well. Um, but the, these three laws, which which really, um, they're kind of tough to understand. When you think about it a little bit, the law of trade-offs, the law of curiosity, the law of modeling, and 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 maybe it's okay that they're tough because you have to dig in then to really learn it. But the law of trade-offs, that's that's one that really was hard for me to understand until I had to live it. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the fifteen invaluable laws of growth, it says you have to give up to grow up. And I loved one of the quotes that there was that John has in his book, and he says, "You can't steal second base while you're standing on first base. You know, you got to take your foot off first base mm -hmm. to steal second, or you're going to get picked off." So, the law of trade-offs is really um, some people think, and 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 maybe I'll share, I'll introduce it with this this example because it was one that I gave in my post. I I remember working with a delightful um, young woman. She was really capable, a fine sales engineer really bright, very articulate. Um, but there must have been some tension that she had with, with our boss at the time because when she left to pursue a dream that she had, which was really great, I think, she went, I think she started her own company, she turned to him and she said, I can and will have it all. Mm. And she said it in front of all of us. And it's like, ooh. Wow. So we all kind of wondered, what did we miss? You know. Mm -hmm. And in the, at the time, it didn't, it didn't really strike me. But as I got older, I've thought about that. And, and the reality is that you can't. Right. You can't have it all. We live in the greatest country this world has ever known. The, the opportunities for people are truly limitless. But yeah. you can't have it all. No, I think one of, my, one of my favorite quotes is, you can't do it all and do it all well. Yes, exactly. That's really good. You know, you, we, we, we have to realize that, and, well, and, and I used to try to do it all, mm -hmm. um, not because I wanted to have it all, but because I felt I couldn't say no to people. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember um, my wife saying to me on more than one occasion, you know, honey, when are you going to say no? When are you going to say no? And I just said, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I'm, I'm needed. I'm, I'm helping here. I'm doing this and this. And all of these things are very good things. And then finally... And this must have been rather annoying for my, my poor wife to have to hear, but I'm sitting in, in, a, in a John Maxwell training in Orlando, and John says, sometimes you have to say no to the good to make time for the best. And I quickly texted that to her, and I <laughs> wish I could have seen her expression, or maybe, I, maybe I'm glad I couldn't see her expression. You're right. <laughs> you know, oh, John says it, now he'll listen. The eye he roll. Listen. Yeah, but I had to learn that. And, and, and it was interesting. So, so let me give you some examples of some of my trade-offs. Mm -hmm. um, I was on the board of the Antique and Classic Boat Society's Finger Lakes chapter, and I loved that. Mm -hmm. I had to say no to that. Um, I was working. I, I used to have a fairly 
not a big role, but I was taking on a larger role in their their annual boat show. I had to back away from that. Um, one of the ones, I was also on a school board, and I loved being on the school board. But I also had to realize that when I was on the school board, that put my wife sometimes in a tough position because she's an employee of the district. Mm-hmm. And I had, and I chose her over that, so to speak. And I said no to that. And so they were all good things. It wasn't that I was saying no to, you know, season tickets at an SU football game that got me away from maybe some more. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it wasn't that I was saying no to just a hobby or something I enjoyed. I was saying no to things that I, where I thought I was adding value. Mm-hmm. But I had to because mm-hmm. there's only limited time. And that's really the law of trade-offs. Yeah. You you had mentioned earlier that, you know, you're kind of living some of the law of trade-offs. Mm-hmm. So explain that. Well, so as some people know, but not probably not everyone just yet, I'm, um, you know, transitioning into a slightly different role at MACNI that is going to allow me to um, have a little more time with my family. So yeah. um, I will be, you know, as you know, I'll be working part-time and primarily from home. So that yep. I'm able to have more time with my kids because they're only little ones and right. time is already flying. And, you know, I, um, I am, you, give, you know, in some ways giving up part of my own identity um, and my part of my career. But the great thing is I get to do a little bit of each um, sure. But there, you know, it, it would be impossible for me to say I'm going to work 40 hours a week and I'm going to take my kids to swim lessons, take my kids to library sessions, um, be the room mom at my daughter's school when she goes to kindergarten, be there for every appointment, um, be the one who is there for their first steps, teaches them how to, you know, teaches them their letters and their numbers and all of that. So that's unrealistic to think that right. I have enough hours in my week to do all of those things. Um, So I've had to make some trade-offs and, and I'm really excited about it. And I think for me, the overarching um, statement that I, I came to when I was wrestling with this was that I actually don't want to do it all because I was, I was someone for a very long time who, um, you know, especially back in like high school and college, um, I wanted to do it all. I wanted to, you know, be on the dean's list. I wanted to have, you know, great grades. I wanted to be top of my class. I wanted to, if there was like an award or a designation that I could have had, I wanted it. And I wanted to work and I wanted to have relationships with my friends. And I wanted to, you know, be at all my cousin's dance recitals and soccer games and my sister's activities. And I like, can't believe I'm saying that as like I you know, 19 year old, I was experiencing burnout. And so I really did learn from that. And I think that's what, you know, just recently made me realize, like, I I don't want to do it all. Yeah, you learn to say no to the good to make time for the best. And I'm really okay with it. Like, I'm... That's great. I feel so relieved, like, after realizing that and making some trade-offs. Right. Because it's not always about... Like the, your achievements aren't what make you who you are. Yes. And so I'm, you know, I'm doing things that, that are important to me and that yep. are good for, you know, other people as well. That's awesome. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you that you, that you, you got to that point. And, and, you know, for me, cause you and I talked about this yep. last fall and, and, they, you know, and you know that, that for a while I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh, what's this mean? Uh-oh, 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 wait, don't, you know, and I remember saying to you, don't you tell me that you're not coming back kind of thing. But we, but we talked through it, and I remember, you know, and, and it was actually something that I'll share with the folks that my wife said to me. She said, you know, what would you want for your daughter? Mm, mm-hmm. Okay. So if I do care about you as a person, which I do, I want what's best for you. And I, and I knew that, you know, when I see you with your children, you know, that is something that's super important for you right now. Mm-hmm. And I think you really will be pursuing your dream, so to speak, because it is your dream. This, mm-hmm. is, this is your life right now. And, and what I really was happy about and thrilled about was that MACNI is open to having you make this transition. Mm-hmm. 
You yes. know, so that you can still, you can do, you can follow your calling, mm-hmm. but still stay connected to the things that I know you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. So that's a perfect example of trade-offs. Yeah. And, and you know, some things that, that there, I do have a couple notes here that I'll kind of go through that um, unsuccessful people make bad trade-offs. Mm-hmm. They, they trade off, they'll go, uh, they won't study or they won't try to grow. They won't be intentional about their growth so that they can watch TV at night. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all kinds of enticing things on TV. Um, average people make few trade-offs, so they just kind of go through the motions, and maybe they'll stay in school, maybe they'll take an online course, whatever. But that's but. But successful people know how to make good trade-offs. Mm-hmm. And by successful, I don't mean, you know, monetarily. I mean people that have a successful life mm-hmm. make good trade-offs. You're you're making a great trade-off right now because it's an investment. Right. And and you're 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 seizing a moment in time that you'll never be able to get back. Mm-hmm. Um, so some trade offs that are worth making, you know, other than the ones that you know, giving up financial security for future potential. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you have to do that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of um, risk taking and trade offs, and yeah. so of course that's that's one of them. Right. You know, um, giving up immediate gratification for personal growth. I'm either gonna, you know stay and 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 study a little bit longer on this topic or I'll, you know I won't take a weekend to go do something fun because I really need to focus on getting a degree whatever it might be mm-hmm. um giving up the fast life for the good life you know uh, people that that need to go partying all the time well you know what maybe that's not long term that's not where you need to be mm-hmm. where you need to be long term is building relationships with people so that you you really can enjoy the fullness of life Giving up security for significance. That's this that's my favorite one on the list. Yeah. I think. Explain why. Um, I think because well, one, because I think I really relate to that because I've always been one to like hold on to that security. Yeah. Um and the second reason I think is because that, in my opinion, might be the most difficult one on the list. Yeah. Um because it's really hard. We're, I mean, we're we're creatures of habit, and yep. security always feels really good. No one really yearns to be uncomfortable or to right. or to feel insecure or to right. be you know in vulnerable or in vulnerable situations. And essentially, that's kind of what you're doing. You're leaving your comfort zone, right? But for significance. So right. that's the important part. We're really talking about giving up that safety for something even better. And right. And the significance is usually down the road. <clears throat> right. You it's know, not instant. The, it's not instant gratification. Right. That's the thing with trade-offs. You don't nest mm-hmm. you it will take a long time till you'll see the benefit of the trade-off that mm-hmm. you made fr- frequently. Mm-hmm. You know, and the and the higher you climb, if and I hate to use that term, but the higher you climb in life, the farther you go, let's say in 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 success if i can put it that way the harder the trade-offs get to be mm-hmm. you know and and you know when i see the one security for significance that was where i was three years ago mm-hmm. was i willing to walk away from the security for a chance at doing something that 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 was much bigger mm-hmm. and that, that had more more impact and and i have not regretted it one day since i left but i'll tell you when I got getting to the point for, to say to Randy, yes, I'll come and to give the really bad, have the bad kind of, I don't mean bad in a way, the difficult conversation with my good friend that I was, whose company I was working for, mm-hmm. you know, to give him a letter to present to the board, that was so hard. Mm-hmm. And, and literally when I walked out the door the last day, I had tears in my eyes because yep. this, I didn't know what was going to happen. But again, I made the transition and I have not looked back once and I haven't regretted it. Mm-hmm. And I think it was good for everybody. Mm-hmm. So that's really the law of trade-offs. And, and if you're going to grow, you better be willing to make the trade-offs. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing I want to touch on before we go back to our other two laws is there are some trade-offs that are never, ever worth making. Mm-hmm. Never trade your character or your integrity for anything. Yep. And, you know, I, I see too many situations where and you can see it in the news all around us. Mm-hmm. You know, when people make a foolish choice, some, 
you know, moment of thrill or whatever, and they're going to give up their character. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they want to secure a financial gain of some sort and they, you know, whatever it is, it's never, ever worth giving up your integrity or your character for anything. Because in the end, that's all we have. Exactly. Is, is our word and our bond, so to speak. So mm -hmm. I really, I love, I always stress that whenever I do a class on yeah, this. Yeah, it's so important. Yeah, do not ever give that up. Mm -hmm. So the next one, law of curiosity. So let's talk about Isla. <laughs> Why? 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 Because <laughs> I use that example in my, my post that, you know, when we're three-year-olds, we always know how to ask why. Mm -hmm. So why is she asking why all the time? You know, at first, like, I was really annoyed by it. And I'm like, why does she keep asking me why? Why? But then I realized it's because she's and you know it starts younger than three it's like really once they can yeah. learn how to talk like <laughs> right 18 months old why why but then you realize that it's because they really don't know and right. everything is so foreign and so they have this curiosity and you know it's our responsibility to to like nourish that and to help them understand and i sure i i told you a little bit about this earlier and unfortunately i don't I can't find the exact article I was reading, but it was really about like how it's so important to feed that curiosity and let them ask why. And right. it's easy for us to like just ignore that curiosity, both in the child or in ourselves. Yep. And, or, or to even just be okay with not knowing. And like, you gotta be curious and ask those questions and, and, learn and grow right. because otherwise you're just like squashing it and uh it is you know at the very base level with a kid it can be a lot of fun to explain things to them too sure you know it, one of the things that struck me um i was i was traveling out to to visit one of our member companies this week and and so i had about an hour in the car and i was listening to a podcast um, a, a John Maxwell leadership podcast and what they do on that podcast. And I'll probably, I'll put a link in our description cause it's an amazing podcast. Uh, it comes out weekly. I think it comes out the same day. Ours does actually on Wednesday. So maybe I shouldn't put the link. Direct in competition. I'll put, <laughs> I'll put the link in <laughs> cause I steal from John all the time, but he, he said, and I don't know if he said it or if his CEO said it, cause what they do is they do a pit of an old teaching, a like a clip of an old teaching and then they discuss it he focuses on growth for one hour every day wow so he's 71 and he still blocks out an hour every day to learn something new mm -hmm. that's amazing mm -hmm. so if you think about that you know f seven hours a week my guess is he'll do it on the weekends he's so disciplined i bet he does but he's continually learning and reflecting and and so part of the goal is to, what did you learn today? It doesn't have to be something amazing. It could be, you know, but if you're learning something new every single day by being curious, you're going to grow. It's just going to happen. Whether, and I always, I love to challenge people, a hobby, yeah. whatever it might be, learn something new. That's what I was thinking. Like, it doesn't have to necessarily be related to your job or related, right? you know, to professional development. like. Just, ex I, I always think about it as like exercising your mind or exercising yes. your brain. And right. like, it, I recently taught myself how to fix my dryer. Wow. And like now I feel very empowered. Sure. To think of how much money you're saving. Fix other things. And that's why I keep telling my husband. That's right. And uh, like, I know I've talked about this before too, but those those online classes that you can take through yes. universities, the MOOCs they're called. Um, yep. I use Coursera.org. Um, the other day I was on there just taking a class about presentations. Like I don't have any presentations coming up, but I just thought this is really interesting and sure. just learning something and then being able to, I love when you're able to use it or teach someone else. And it's right. Especially when it's something very abstract, but like, why, Hey, like, why do you know how to do that? Like, why do you know how to fix a dryer? Sure, or, you know, sure. And it's, it just gets you using your brain in a different way than when you're at your, at your desk or at your job, right. 
typically, right. you know, doing a lot of the same things. Exactly. I highly recommend to our, to our listeners that, you know, they know that I stress reading and, and listening to books and podcasts, but read or listen to something or listen to a podcast that is not related to your job as well. Mm-hmm. It's going to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to a book now, a biography of Frederick Douglass. Yeah. And, and what I didn't realize was that a lot of the time in the 1850s, Frederick Douglass, he actually, for a while, lived in Rochester. I didn't know that. Uh-huh. And then they talked about, there's, there's a part in the book where he's talking about where the, this mob of people broke into a jail in Syracuse, New York, <laughs> to free a slave whose name was Jerry. Really? And if you go to Clinton Square... There's a plaque for the Jerry rescue. Wow. That there was a runaway slave that was that was arrested and put in prison in, in jail somewhere in Syracuse. Mm-hmm. And um there was a lib- I think it was called the Liberty Party. But there were a lot of abolitionists. So upstate New York was really a hotbed for abolitionists. Right. Um and they literally broke into the jail to free Jerry. Mm-hmm. And it's in the book. You know, and I said, I wonder if they're going to talk about the Jerry Rescue, the Jerry. So anybody of our listeners in Central New York, go to go to Clinton Square. It's on the west facing side of Clinton Square, um, and there's a there's a plaque, and it's it's that. I guess it must have been at that site where the jail was, where the 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 abolitionists broke in and freed Jerry, and then he was able to get um in his way to Canada. Well, look, you just gave everyone their hour of learning. They can look this up. Exactly. So that's what what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I started making connections with the book that I read about Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. So it's just, that's what I'm saying. Get yourself curious because you're going to, life is much richer. Imagine now you'll be able to take your kids or your grandkids downtown Syracuse and say, Mm -hmm. hey, I want to show you something. Right. You know, there was a time when people were enslaved and that was wrong. But in central New York... We thought it was wrong before a lot of other people did. And look mm-hmm. what happened. So yeah. that's the curiosity piece. Yeah. Last but not least, the law of modeling. So if you're, the, I've said this multiple times, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to grow, you absolutely must find people to model after. Um, I think you need to find mentors. I think you need to find coaches. Um, you don't always have to pay them. In fact, most of the time you won't need to pay them. Mm-hmm. You know, but there will be people that you can that are ahead of you on the journey. I think John likes to say fifteen years ahead of you, so to speak. Um, but I would say you know it can be a generation ahead of you or mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. Find people that can be that you that you value. So, uh, or that are people of of character. Maybe that's the way to put it. So. Um, I got a couple notes here that I that I shared with you earlier. A good mentor or a good model is a worthy example. They're living what they're saying. There's a lot of people that say things, but they don't live it. Mm-hmm. So you want to find those people of high moral character. They're going to be available. Now, that availability can be kind of hard to figure out. Um, I was being mentored by John Maximo before I met him. Um, because I was being mentored through his books. Mm-hmm. So, and through his YouTube, now you can see almost everything on YouTube. You know, I actually view Simon Sinek as a mentor of mine. I've never met Simon. But he mentors me through his books and through the, the things I can find on YouTube. So, figure out how you can connect with them. It's great, though. You should have some people where you can sit down and, and talk with them. You know, the, the beauty of MACNE is come to our events. Yep. Meet meet people, you yes. know, and if somebody's looking for a mentor, they could reach out to you and me and we could say, hey, we'll make an introduction for you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because we know the people that would be more than happy to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you want a mentor that has proven leadership if you're looking for leadership. Now, if you're looking for a mentor for parenting, find people that have, you think have done a good job raising kids, so to speak. Mm-hmm. They need to possess wisdom, and, and wisdom is a hard one. You know, a lot of times people say, well, define wisdom. And, and I, the best definition I can use is wisdom is knowing how to apply knowledge. So you can have a lot of knowledge, but if you don't know how to use it, 
you're not very wise. So wisdom mm-hmm. is that that extra that secret sauce, so to speak. Yeah. You know, our grandparents often we could see as being wise people if we were blessed with wise grandparents. Mm-hmm. Um, our parents became wiser as we got older. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of you know when we were younger, we were teenagers, we didn't think they were that smart. Nope. Till we started having kids, and all of a sudden, these people are brilliant. Mom, you were right about everything. Most things, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's always what I tell her. <laughs> you know, and I think your mom, because I've had the pleasure of speaking with her a couple uh-huh. times, I think she would be the first to say, no, I wasn't right about everything. Mm-hmm. You know, but but there was a lot that she was right about, because yeah. I know I certainly wasn't right, am not right about everything. Mm-hmm. Um, a good mentor provides friendship and support. And, and I think, and they're real friends. They're going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Yeah. And that's a big, so these are not fair weather friends. Mm -hmm. They're people that can say, listen, let me tell you, I know this is something you really want to do, but this is how it's going to end. And, but then they're also there when you don't listen to them and you fail, they're there to pick you up and help you out and say, okay, now go wash your face and come back and we'll, we'll fix this situation. Mm -hmm. Um, A good mentor is a coach. Who makes a difference in people's lives. So you're looking for that track record of somebody who has made the choice from security to significance. They're adding value to people, even if it means saying no to some things that they might like to do. Mm -hmm. So that's my list. Well, I also think we should touch on just really briefly reverse mentor. Oh, yes, please. Yes. So... I think, you know, this idea of reverse mentorship came to us from one of our member companies a couple of years ago who right. has, the, um, they have a very robust program doing this. And, you know, it's important, you know, if you say you've been in your career for a really long time. So we all think of mentor like, okay, I need to find someone, you know, like you mentioned, that's 15 years ahead of me in my career or right. a generation ahead of me in my career. Um, if you are someone who has been in your career a long time, maybe it would be helpful to look backward and and, right. and have someone who is 15 years your junior or yeah or more or more like a generation um right. there's so much that we can be learning from each other and it right. doesn't you know the the information can it can go both ways and and each of you can work together to to help because we're all working together right there's yes several generations you know people are living longer people are working longer so you got to figure at any given time you can have, right, like three generations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in a workplace at the same time. So right. Um, you know, yeah, it, it's important that we're taking that into consideration too. I'm I'm so glad you brought that up because you know I'm going to give a, a perfect example, mm-hmm. and that perfect example is the mentoring that you give me. <laughs> you know where I would not have done the podcast. Had you not agreed to do it with me, mm-hmm. um, I would not be writing. Had you not agreed to work with me on that, and mm-hmm. and so you give me a perspective that nobody else can give me, you know. And 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 what I tell and I tell this, I share this with other people, and I'm and I'm glad that you brought it up so I can actually say this publicly that that there is so much value that you add to my life as a mentor to me mm-hmm. that I cannot imagine that not you not being there. That's why I was so worried. Oh my goodness. She's, what do you mean? She's not going to, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and thankfully you, we've been able to, you've been able to see a way so that you can continue to help me on that. So Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that about you. Um, and, and I hope that everybody can find those mentors Mm -hmm. to help them kind of cope with a world that's changing quickly. And it doesn't have to be anything formal. I mean, you know, you just right. gave the example of our relationship and I look at you as one of my mentors. You were someone who really helped me through this trade-off that I'm making right now. Um, yep. And, you know, we have a very casual way of doing it. It's not like a formal, okay, right. let's sit down, let's review, uh, you know, which can be great too, but it doesn't have sure. to be. It doesn't have to right. be, like you said, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be formal. Um, right. You know, you, there's just a few things that we mentioned that that make up a good mentor, and that's all yep. you really need. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I'm so glad you brought that up because mm-hmm. I missed it. <laughs> so, 
All right. So any special plans coming up? Uh, no, not really. How about you? Um, you know, we actually do, and I, and I will share this. Um, we do have some special plans this weekend. Actually, my daughter is coming with her family. And, and the situation is a little bit sad, but not so sad. It's, so there was, a, there was a, uh, a family that moved from Syracuse down to Tennessee. Um, they were, the, the husband was um, a classmate of my son Mike's, and they had a two-year-old uh, that, that died of cancer. Mm-hmm. And it really was a thing that the community down in Tennessee, in the Nashville area, and here in Syracuse via social media were, mm-hmm. were really trying, you know, um, Finn was suffering for a long time, but they were always, they were trying different things. And so there's actually going to be not a memorial. I think the family wants it to be a celebration of Finn's life. Wow. So they're coming up to Syracuse to have one of those services Mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, it's one of those things that helps you realize what life is really all about. Mm -hmm. And those are so, and I was just thrilled to hear that my daughter was coming with her three kids. Um because they wanted to support the family. So that's kind of, that's our weekend. Um, and, you know, those are things, too, that are great teaching opportunities mm-hmm. for our kids. To yeah. say, this is why we're doing it, and this is what's happened. And, and, and so we're going to have a celebration of Little Finn's life. Good. So that's what we're doing. Good. And I think it's nice, because it's going to let our community here kind of embrace the folks that have suffered a loss. Mm -hmm. So, which is a sweet thing. It is. And I have no idea what we're talking about (laughs) next week. All right. Well, it'll be a surprise. So, it'll be a surprise. (laughs) But I better figure it out soon because I got to get it to you quickly. So, So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. 